We know that the Victorian and Edwardian silhouette was achieved with lots of petticoats and lots of shaping at the waist and hips. But how do you make those petticoats adaptable for when you want to wear different styles and shapes? So if you will allow me to step into frame. Wouldn't it have been good if I gave this an iron? My skirt has a very crumpled waistband and that's fine. But my petticoat has a facing, so no waistband. So this waistband is not going on top of, it's not going on top of anything else. This petticoat, well actually there's two petticoats here, let me bring them to the foreground. And again, you can see it's nice and smooth. And then when you come round to the centre back, we've got a little bit of gather and that is controlled entirely by a drawstring. So if I undo the drawstring, these gathers fall away. This one has actually got some poppers or snaps over the centre back fastening because I did also wear it as a skirt on its own. And under that reveals another petticoat. which is finished off in the same way. So there's a drawstring here, there's a tiny bit of gather because this is quite a narrow petticoat, there's not a lot of fullness, and a very smooth, flat front. In fact, let's bring that even closer, which will mean dislodging a dog. Come on, thank you. So this has got a very smooth finish. And then from this point here, this is where the fullness of the petticoat is. So this is fitted, this is smooth. And then here there's a little bit of gather. And once again, that gather is released by releasing a drawstring. And so this part of the waistband is a channel for that drawstring. The inside of the front of the facing is very smooth. And I've used very small stitches here so that you can barely see how that facing is held down but honestly it's an underneath layer so actually those stitches could be machined or they could be big they don't have to be invisible this lady's a little heavier so this petticoat was actually finished with a standard waistband like you'd expect on a skirt because it was pre my experimenting with this style so I've taken that waistband off and I've put the petticoat on over a fairly substantial pad bit of padding and I've pulled the excess in into some pleats but I don't want it pleat, I want it to be gathered like the others so once again my actual facing will be fitted for the front panel and this side front panel but I think the remaining let's see how many, I think that's three panels yes, no, two these two panels Front panel, side front panel, side back panel, back panel are all going to be brought in, drawn in with the drawstring. But I want to sort of reshape the waistband a bit first because at the moment it's sitting a little bit low at the front, the drip the skirt, and a little bit high at the back because it's the hemline, because it's going over this padding. So first of all, I'm going to put those temporary bit of pleating in place like that uh, I'm not going to get too hung up on getting them to match I just want it to sort of fit snugly like that I'm going to put this bit of elastic around the waistline and then adjust it into what I think is a good position for the waistline to be. Now, the beauty of this design is that you could also shape the front to be a bit dipped so that when you're reducing the bulk at the front of your dress, and say you've got like a pointed bodice coming over the top, if the skirt's dipped, it means it's automatically gonna make the waist a bit smaller. And you can use hooks on your corsets um, or on your underlayers to hold this part of the waistband out of the way of the waist of your bodice and you see this on some ex original examples I'll try and find some pictures to demonstrate it but you'll also see when I wear it with a corset how that works 
So although I might draw a straight line on here for now, I may end up reshaping that into more of a dipped waistline when I come to the come to lying it flat. So I can't tell if that's straight or not, so let me have a look. But really you only need to mark one side because you can cut it as a mirror image. You can now horrify all the people that hate friction pens by drawing on a finest ivory silk with it. Don't do it if you don't want to, do it if you're happy to. All right, so now you can see everything in the flat. This is my centre front, and I've pinned the seams together to get a vague feeling of symmetry. And you can see the result of my line drawing is the centre front is here and it gets a little bit misshapen there and then goes off towards the centre back up here. So I said I wanted to actually make this a bit more pointed so I'm going to make this line more of a dipped line like that and then bring this around a little bit more like that. So the waistband is actually going to run well, the waistline is actually going to run from up here down to this point there. So I've actually only got about a quarter of an inch seam allowance to work with here. So I'm going to give myself the same here. And now I can cut my facing. Now I happen to have some leftovers from when this petticoat was originally made. And I'm going to cut a straight bit of facing for here and here. So in fact, although it's a little bit what it doesn't need to be as deep as that. But I quite like this bit to be shaped, so I shall sort through my remaining scraps. You're just a little bit too small, I think. All right, after a search that went on for rather longer than I would have liked, I found some more scraps of this silk. And I think this piece, if I pick the widest bit of it, it's not really on any grain at all that one would choose to use. No, no, I need a wider bit of fabric. Finally, we got there. And I'm so sorry, this is where my head obscures everything I'm doing. I am drawing along the line of the new waistline plus seam allowance onto the silk facing panel. And then take the skirt away and measure from that line I've drawn the depth of the facing that I want plus seam allowance for turning under underneath, which in this case became a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the top, quarter of an inch on the bottom, and an inch deep for the facing itself. And once that is all marked out, I pin the two layers of the silk together and cut out the shape of the facing, making sure that I'm keeping the body of the petticoat out of the way so I don't cut through that accidentally. I'm so sorry this overhead camera view was meant to make everything clearer and instead I just obscure it with my big graying haired head. And once again I'm obscuring your view, this time cutting two straight strips of silk to become the drawstring and facing at the centre back, making sure that it's the same length as the side back and back panel um, but also making sure that there's a little seam that fits with the angle of the front facing so that's what I'm drawing here and then this also gets cut down to the same width as the front facing so an inch for the facing and a quarter of an inch seam allowance for the top and a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the bottom and then just drawing a line along there and cutting it out. This is fairly simple as it's really just two 
identical rectangles. And so here you have my finished facing pieces that just need seaming together here. Ooh. Now, when I put this project away four years ago, five years ago, no, four years ago, I deliberately kept the silk thread and the bobbin that I'd filled with silk thread separate from all the other ivory silk thread I have because I knew I'd be coming back to finish it one day so there we are that was a nice surprise wasn't it so I can put the bobbin back in my newly serviced banana what sort of needle do we have in there oh you feel all right I was worried recently that this machine was in need of some major work because it fell over but fortunately the sewing machine serviceman, despite saying he may have to take it away, worked wonders. Pinned that the wrong way, just say. And I like a nice tiny stitch. Probably should check the machine's going to sew the silk nicely first. So. Maybe a little bit small, even for me. So there's still some oil in that machine from where it's been serviced. But it's stitching just fine. So making sure I've got right sides to right sides. And I'm not so sure about my little sort of swan neck shaping going on here, so I might flatten that curve out a little bit. This strange mixture of pins I'm using are all different types of silk pin. So I've got a entomology pin. I think these are also an entomology pin. They look very similar, but these ones have got a gold head and they're just slightly thinner. So these ones come from McCulloch and Wallace. So they're sold as silk pins. And I think they are also beetle pins, but they're just not quite as nice as these ones, which I buy from Merchanter's Mills, but you can buy straight from beetle collecting supplies. Then I have the red-headed pins, which are just sold as silk pins. And then I have the really fine insect pin, which are almost too fine to use, but sometimes they're very, very handy. And I should keep them separately because they... They, they should be kept for very fine work. But anyway, they're all muddled in together because that's how they came back from a job where I had an ever dwindling amount of pins as the job went on. All right, we're ready to sew. I once again realized that my hands actually hide what I'm doing. So I've speeded this up, but I'm just machining it along with a straight stitch, doing a slight 
V with a with a straight stitch at the bottom of it when I get to the center front so that the, that shape will turn out nicely. You'll see that when I come to the trimming and turning through stage. And then finishing off at the ends with a back tack on the machine to keep everything nice and secure. So where I have my shaping here, I may need to clip in a little bit to get that to turn through, turn over nicely, especially at the deep point. But first I'm going to pink all of my seam allowances just to stop them fraying too much. It's quite tough to cut through some of the seam allowances of the actual skirt because I French seamed them again because it was a customer's job. And then since then I've made my own petticoats and I've just straight seamed them and pinked them and I think you actually get a much better, neater, smoother result. So unless you've got a very, very fray fabric, I would actually recommend keeping your seams as small and neat as possible and just pink them rather than French seam them. Obviously, you might want to fell or hand finish your seams and that's entirely up to you. And I would on some fabrics, but not on a silk that can be trusted. I'm just pressing the seam allowance of both the facing and the skirt open here so that when I press them all down into the skirt I get a nice shape where I've got that little inverted V and it just makes for a neater, flatter finish. And now I'm turning over the facing to get a nice neat finish on the waistband, which you could also top stitch if you wanted. There's nothing wrong with that. Machine in Victorians loved a bit of machine top stitching because machines were sometimes new and exciting to them. But unless my waist, unless my facing doesn't sit nicely, I will probably just leave it un, un top stitched. Some people don't like to steam silk, especially silk taffeta. As this skirt has had rather a mixed life, I'm not too concerned about it. But if I was starting a new and a fresh, I might be a bit more precious with it. I've got to that little, little sweetheart of the centre front. Oh, I'm quite pleased with that now. Now you can see the top edge is finished off like we had it before and now I need to turn the inside raw edge in to neaten everything off and it's also important at this stage to put whatever you want to use as a drawstring and fasten it inside the drawstring area um, so that you can bring that end out here. There are other ways you can do that but I like to put my drawstring in now and then just keep it out of the way while I'm finishing off this section so that the ends of the drawstring are sticking out here at the centre back, ready to be adjusted when worn. So I'm just turning in a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but also making sure that it stays a nice, smooth, pretty shape of my facing and pinning it in place, anchoring it to those seam points so that I can be really securely stitched down there. Before I move on to the centre backs, I like to check that that centre front is just sitting nice and smooth. After much dithering, I'm just going to use piping cord as my drawstring. So I'm going to sew it onto the seam point there for security, and then fold this facing over it, making it into a channel. 
And remember, you're going to be pulling on this to tighten your skirt, so you really want to secure it in. You could even do it with a little bit of machining if you wanted extra security. I now turn the straight edge of the facing over and pin it in place along the edge and turn in the seam allowance, making it a little bit narrower than the facing at the front, so this is about a half an inch deep. And I make sure that that cord really is firmly inside there, but I'm also not going to sew through it. And do the same with the other side with one tiny change. Because I've got the remains of a little placket here, I'm going to finish this off neatly and then I want my drawstring thread to come out of a hole in the petticoat here. So I need to do a little worked eyelet first here. I make the hole about a quarter of an inch away from the top edge and the placket with my awl and then using a slightly thicker white silk thread held double work an eyelet all the way around that hole making sure that all the raw edges are covered up nicely and so your drawstring can travel through securely and not damage the pull at, damage or pull at the silk. This is a really really quick eyelet hole though still it's not one that's going to be seen or noticed the whole point of it is just to make sure that it's nice and strong and yeah that really is the point of it it just needs to be strong it doesn't need to be beautiful. So now we have our little eyelet hole worked there we can put the piping cord through here so it comes out the hole and fasten it on the side seam the same as we did on the other side to create our drawstring and turn the silk over to create the channel and then we will have to tidy this little messy messy placket up because that's left over from putting a more traditional waistband on. Right, because that was far too fiddly for you to see what I was doing. The end of the facing is turned in here and is going to be whipped onto the edge of the placket and I'm going to have to do a little bit of hand sewing there where the placket, because that's also been hand sewn on previously, is coming off. And then a little hand finish here along that raw edge and then ultimately that will mean that my drawstring can pull up tightly like that and correspond with the drawstring on this side. And because this side is coming over this side, that's why that's why this could come out at the end of the end of the facing and this one needed to be set back a little bit. Now, you don't need to have a placket on the back of your petticoat. No one will see that necessarily. But because this is a petticoat that had previously had a traditional waistband, it was there and I didn't feel like taking it off because that neatened everything up. So now you can hand sew, or now I can hand sew along the inside of my facing all the way around. Of course, it could also be machined, as I said before. The Victorians loved a bit of machine stitching if it meant they could try out their new toy. And no one's ever going to see this as an underlayer, but I'm going to stick with the hand sewing for now. And that's using my fine silk thread. I have an incredibly tiny needle, probably too tiny. And just to make sure that the seam allowances from here don't come pulling out with the drawstring, I'm going to do a little whip stitch down the edge of here first and then start sewing along the waistline. So now I'm anchoring my thread onto that seam allowance at the back of the skirt. So the stitches are going to be very close together because I want the drawstring because I want the drawstring to be very strong but I'm only going to take one strand, if I can, of the silk below so that it doesn't show through too much. Already I'm getting a knot, which I don't want. Jump. All right. Okay. 
And so you can see a little dimple from every stitch, but this is just the sort of fabric where it's always going to show. You can sort of smooth it a bit with your fingernails. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to sew along the waistline in exactly the same way all the way along. Or you can take a less, you can take a smaller stitch than that. So you can make this channel even smaller. I haven't tried very hard with this one to make it a tiny channel, but it you know, it, it does make a sort of smoother pull for the drawstring if it's a small channel, but equally it keeps down the bulk. But this isn't a particularly large amount of skirt that's going to be gathered down into my waist. If you had a petticoat that maybe had much wider panels, so maybe you had a shaped front panel and then the two panel back panels of the petticoat were maybe large rectangles or large, yeah, or large squares which means you have more fabric to gather down into the waist. You might want to make a tighter channel, or you may even want to gather some of that fabric down first and then put a drawstring in, so that when you're pulling the drawstring to reduce it down for the waist, you're not having so much bulk in it. I don't know whether I've explained that clearly, but you definitely see examples of both on 19th century skirts and petticoats. Oh, I'd always heard black on black's bad for filming, but ivory on ivory is not great either, is it? Let's move and see if we can give you a better bird's eye view. <laughs> So we have the finished, finished faced skirt. See the inside of the facing there. It's the inside of the center front and the outside of the center front. And then the outside of the channel, the inside of the channel and the right hand side of the skirt with the drawstring coming out and the left hand side of the channel with the drawstring coming out of the eyelet hole and there's the placket there there are some hooks and eyes on the centre back and now we can have a look at it on the body or on the stand <laughs> smooth front, smooth side, and then the drawstring at the centre back can be arranged over any bum padding. And because it's taffeta it's a little bit chunky, but it doesn't have to be worn directly on the waistline so that when your skirt waistband sits over the top on the actual smallest part of the waist, you're not adding the bulk of any waistband there. So it's nice and smooth over the sides and slightly dipped at the front. And you can also see it on me, worn over the same padding and with a corset. And because it is a drawstring, the beauty of this means if you want to wear it without the padding, it will still fit. And if you want to wear it without the corset, it will still fit. Thank you. 